So, you're guaranteed to miss at least one, maybe two, six, 12 of these right here because there's just some times that you just don't see them when you're going through and doing the work. But this week, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be trying to get this radiator core support off of our 65 Ranchero so that we can dry fit the new radiator core support on here. Do I think that's gonna happen? Most likely not. But after the break, we're gonna go in and just blaze through some of the stuff on here and then talk about some detail points on the radiator core support. Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let AutoCrafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. All right, one of the first things I'm gonna talk about is the fact that we did not put the jack stands on here initially when we were doing most of our spot weld cuts. Now, you heard me say most. We do leave some spot welds in position so that the chassis won't move around much before we put it on jack stands. But sometimes, if you're doing this on a weekend warrior basis, you're not gonna get all these spot welds cut away in a weekend. Now you probably can, but I'm just saying, if you're like me and you get interrupted with stuff and people come over and things like that, you may not be able to, and you may wanna keep that chassis mobile until the last second before you start setting everything up to take the radiator core support off. Number two thing I'm gonna talk about on this is, is no, I do not go in and put a cross brace on the upper part of the radiator core support on the aprons. And the reason for that is, you're gonna go in and set that position anyway. There is a set place on the radiator core support for it. So I don't really see a good need to go in and put another bracing piece up there because we're gonna to have to be mucking around with this one anyway. The inner fender is a little jacked up. We're gonna have some work to do. Um, with regards to the jack stands, now we're using a pair of trailer jacks for the front. I find these to be really good for going in and setting up a chassis to get everything flat and level. I've already leveled this chassis once whenever we did the floor pan, so I know basically how everything is. So I, I put my trailer jacks on some cribbing and then just turn them up to where they're touching the underside of the frame rails. I don't put them too far out because if you do, you're gonna be having to move them anyway because you're impacting the, uh, the bracing here. Um, and past that, I'm using standard jack stands everywhere else, just throwing them out on, underneath the car on jacking positions or on frame rails so we have a good solid mount. And then basically now what we're going to do is we're going to start going in and using our stack chisel. This is a really nice piece that we got from the guys at Eastwood. It's been really good. I've used it a good bit on other stuff as well. And the reason I'm using this is I don't have 220 power here. <laughs> to hook up my compressor yet. So it's all hand work, and I'm even gonna actually have to run a generator if I wanna go in and put a brace across another part that I am going to talk about in just a little bit. But first, let's see some work.
All right, now what I've got going on is when I push through these, I'll try to go where the holes are at because that tells me that's where the spot welds were. And when I'm pushing through, I want to go all the way through until I can see that panel separate or the, the, the <laughs> my uh, ugh, splitting tool comes on the other side of it. In other words, if I'm doing this, I'm going to push it all the way through. I want to see it go all the way to the other side of the hole or see separation in the panel, which I've got here. And yes, when you get this done, you are going to have to go in and use a body hammer and dolly to straighten out your flange that you're going to keep. We'll show you that after this is over with when we start going in and putting everything back together. But we're not doing that today. I'm sorry I'm ruining hopes everywhere. And this is just a lot of separation work. But I'm also wanting to show you that you can do this without air tools. Keep that in your mind. All right, now we should be pretty much loose all the way across. I got something sticking somewhere in here. There we go. Now the upper part of the radiator core support is completely loose. I'm going to try to go around and find out where we're tight still. We do have one other thing we've got to take care of, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second here as far as uh, what you have to take out in order to get this thing to come completely loose. All right, that noise tells me I've got something going on here other than the edge welds that we saw or that I saw before. These are usually edge welded, but there is, I think, yeah, there's a spot weld right here that I'm going to have to deal with. Uh, they probably won't be any deeper than that because it would have been really hard for them to get the spot welder further back in here. But there's at least two and then they went in and they used probably a brazing setup to put uh, some weld on the outside edge of it as well. Alright, so this inserts over the top of the frame rail out here. So this will dictate position for this piece here on both sides. So I really don't care enough about it to go in and pull the strut rods out or anything of that nature. Again, I've got a engine cross member in here, so I don't think the chassis is going to fold up because the radiator core support is not in position. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be a problem. And it'll be a problem for me because I've got to go in next. I've got to go over here and cut away where this is at, find any spot welds that may be in position on here, and remove those as well so that we can take this radiator core support off for this week's video, at least in theory. Spot weld cutter. Ugh. See? Told you. Let's see if we can cut it with that. Sometimes you can actually cut them away if you don't take all the metal off of them. Like that. I do believe that's all of it. Let's make sure. Yep. That's it. All right. Uh, it's not wanting to come off yet, so I've got something holding it up. I'm not going to get medieval at this point with it. I'm not, I'm not ticked off enough. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to see if I can get it to move. I'm not sure why I'm not getting any movement out of it yet as Logan drives by on the F-100. Yeah. Definitely still being held on somewhere. Because it's popping off on the sides. Sometimes that's how you find where weld points are at. I don't even know how there could be a weld point there, but apparently there is. Looks like there's a spot weld there, and a spot weld over here, and right here that are holding it in position. There's one here, 
one here, and one here. Okay, so guess what? More spot weld cutting. All right, so uh, we have gotten these done. Now, one of the problems you're gonna run into is in a case like this where this is folded out, you're gonna have to peel this out in order to be able to get to the spot welds in here to knock them loose with this piece. And you'll want one of these to do this because you don't want to use a really big vice grip here. You won't be able to get it in between the two pieces of metal. So use a small uh, needle nose vice grip and you should be able to get that pulled out enough for you to be able to get the stack down there and beat these into submission, at least theoretically. So now we've come up with another, what, two. So we've got seven or eight at this point. Like I said, one, two, seven, eight, nine, whatever. So I'm going to try to get this thing undone now. Welcome to Continuity Issues 101. We had a problem with one of our cameras that was shooting, of course, all the detail shots of me taking and cutting this thing apart. So I'm coming back in after we've done all the work and uh, basically showing you what we did without anything in the way. Uh, and basically we did this. We had tried to go in and actually cut the uh, ready to core support off of the strut tower here, this little piece here and ended up having a problem with it just not wanting to come apart because I think there's a number of spot welds there. And so what I finally decided to do to make it more expedient for me was to go in and cut the radiator core support around the perimeter of the strut mount here. And that way I could pull the radiator core support out and have a lot more room to go in and grind down through the spot welds on the top here. I probably will still have to go in and cut holes in the strut brace, but it's just going to be a lot easier to do that in a post fashion than in a during fashion. Uh, so there we're going to move on through the rest of the video. Unfortunately now you've seen the big reveal of me pulling it off because you know it's off because here it is. And if we hadn't had the camera malfunction you wouldn't see this because you would have grinding and cutting. It would have been awesome. But it's a big wire right through the shot. Moving on. Yes! And the way it goes. Well, it's out. And that's our show for this week, folks. We are uh, going to move forward on this thing and start doing some more stuff. We're moving this show to Sunday. If you're watching it, you know now that we're on Sundays with, with Man and Mechanic. We're doing a little test with YouTube. Do me a favor and go check out our Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me and a bunch of other people, as well as Patreon videos specifically done for you guys that support us on Patreon. It doesn't affect anything we do with Man and Mechanic or Auto Restaurant. Our normal videos are our normal videos. You'll still see what we always do there. Also, click that bell for notification on the subscription button. If you don't, you don't know anything about what we're doing. And believe me, subscribing right now is really important because YouTube has changed the way they do their algorithms and we just don't show up as much as normal. So please, put us on Facebook forums and groups or whatever you call them and, and let people know about us because they may not find out about us in any other way. And we're doing a ton of cool tech like showing you how to take radiator core supports off of Falcons. Where else are you going to get that stuff, huh? You guys, do me a favor, have a great week, be kind to each other, love on each other, be good to each other, and we'll see you on down the road. Logan actually had mom things to do today, so he didn't get to finish the video with me. That's okay. I mean, you know, he's doing mom things, and <clears throat> it keeps me from having to do mom things. You know, honeydews. Put the kid on it. <sighs> he didn't get to find out how to do the final on this, but you know what? I cut out some latent aggression and just... Man stuff, hammers, drills. <laughs> I hope it's not COVID. <laughs> <laughs>